We've got some Battlefield 2042 PC system requirements as well as some open beta. This green screens are confusing. This over the, there's also some uh, wherever it is some uh, beta dates for the open beta. Now you might be thinking, wait, Daniel, haven't you already made this video? Yeah. Uh, whoa, videoception, what's this? Well, back on August 4th, I made a video about the Battlefield 24 uh, 2042 system requirements, but the thing is, the game isn't out yet, so system requirements can change, and they did, so I'm making an updated video because the, uh, the requirements changed. They're similar, but they are different. So this is a bit of a repeat of that video, but it's also an update with better information for you. So, what are the differences? Well, they've upgraded the minimum AMD processor from an FX8350 all the way to, boom, a Ryzen 5 3600, and those are not even close to the same thing. So, huge change to the minimum CPU requirement. And, if we jump over comparing to the old video, they have, uh, they've kept the Intel minimum the same, though. By the way, the CPUs just don't, wait, wait, keep watching the video, the CPUs just don't make any sense. Like, I think they might have even switched their minimum and their recommended. It's that bad as far as these don't make any sense. But anyway, uh, on the recommended side of things, um, by the way, I think the, the minimum GPUs stayed the same. 560 for AMD and a 1050 Ti for NVIDIA. The recommended specs uh, used to be a 3600 for the recommended. That is now the minimum, and now the recommended is a 2700X. Ah, uh, getting out of the way, 27, uh, I just need to make myself smaller. Ah! Okay, so <laughs> there I go, I'm out of the way. By the way, th there, there's, there's the dates for things if you wanna do the beta and all that. I'll probably uh, test it out on my system. I have an RX 6800 XT and an i5 9600K. Get some benchmark videos on that open beta is the plan. Anyway, but what else do we have here? Okay, so they uh, changed the recommended, what used to be the recommended to the minimum, and then they changed the minimum to a 2700, and then they kept the Intel the same at the 4790. Also, the GPUs have been updated from an RTX 2060 to a uh, RTX 3060. And on the, I'm still in the way, even though I made myself smaller. Here we go. <laughs> and from an RX, uh, what was it? A 5600 XT up to a 6600 XT. So they've bumped both of those up a generation as far as the mid-tier goes, which does uh, increase those requirements. Now, let's talk about this for a second. First of all, notice that this does not give you a resolution or a frame rate target. So many games do that now, but this seems like Battlefield 2042, the devs are going with the old school, minimum recommended, we're not telling you what that means. <laughs> okay, but I think I know what it means. And I said this in my other video, and I'm gonna use the same evidence. Based on previous Battlefield games, and what their recommended and minimum settings actually got you in terms of performance, I think we can make an educated guess about this one. Also, these are pretty standard. Usually minimum specs a game gives you are either telling you 1080p, 30 frames per second low settings, or they're telling you 1080p, 60 frames per second low settings. I believe that in this game, this means 60 frames per second. And I don't mean constant 60, I don't mean your minimums are 60. I mean 60 average, which means in simple areas, you're probably gonna be above 60. And in more demanding scenes, you will crash well below 60. Your minimums will be below 60. Now, what am I basing that off of? I already told you, but basically in Battlefield 5, so to be clear, we're talking Battlefield 5 now, their minimum system requirements recommended a GTX 1050. Um, and so if I jump over to somebody who released a benchmark video of Battlefield 5 on a GTX 1050, I'm in the way again. <laughs> so uh, that's what this is, right? That's what this is. And this is the game at, uh, I think they show it right here. They are playing the game at low settings. So low settings and they get, they're switching it back to low guys, I promise. So he switches it over, he goes, all of them are on low, so he switches them all to low, and what's happening? Hey look, we're in the 50s. Like I said, it's not a locked 60. We're in the 50s. We're in the 50s. We're in the 50s. We're close to 60. Oh look, we're a little bit above 60. A little bit below 60. 
So do you see what I'm saying? I'm not saying you're gonna get exactly 60, but hey, we're above 60. You're going to get a bit above, a bit below, and average out somewhere around in the 50s or 60-ish range on the minimum. Now again, that was for Battlefield 5, but that was based on their minimum recommendation. It's well above si it's well above 30 frames per second. So, given that minimum specs are usually either targeting 30 or 60, um, I'm gonna go with the 60 here is probably what they're targeting. I'm gonna get out of the way again. Now for the recommended specs, I think they're targeting 60 frames per second again, and I still think they're targeting 1080p, but I think they're targeting targeting ultra settings. And once again, I'm basing that off of what they did for Battlefield 5. The Battlefield 5 recommended GPU was a GTX 1060. And yes, I know I'm not also doing AMD. I got criticized for that in my other video. Um, I'm not also doing AMD because I don't want this video to just go on and on and on. I'm pulling one of the recommended GPUs and I'm comparing it to that, okay? <laughs> just to get a ballpark figure for what I think they're doing. So this is somebody playing the GTX 1060 at 1080p. They test all the settings, but this is currently the ultra settings and notice their frame rate, now I kill the sound. Uh, we're above 60 frames per second when not much is happening, right? We're up into the 70s, uh, all that. This is ultra settings. And if you go, go through again, we're above 60, we're above 60. Now we stay above 60 for most of their test there. So what I'm getting at is that I think the recommended settings are for a solid 1080p 60 frames per second or more at ultra settings. And the minimum specs are low settings around 60, you'll definitely dip below it, okay? We'll find out soon enough with the open beta. And again, the final release will hopefully perform better than the open beta. Now, let's actually talk about these. I've given you the stats, but hey, stick around. Maybe you don't have one of these particular GPUs or CPUs, how does yours stack up? And these CPUs, like I said, are insane. Let's actually talk about the CPUs for a second. So their minimum specs are a Ryzen 3600, which is a six core 12 thread processor from, uh, when was it, 2019. This is a relatively new and very good processor. This is insane for this to be the minimum because they're putting it up against an i5 6600K which is a four core, four thread processor from 2015. And you're like, but Intel's single core performance is better. Yeah, at equivalent generations, not a 2015 uh, single core performance up against a 2019 single core performance. So these make zero sense to stack up against each other. Not only that, but then when you jump up to the recommended PC specs, they have the Intel at a 4790, which by the way is even older than a 6600K, but it is a higher end chip from an even older generation. <laughs> but they have it up against an AMD Ryzen 2700X. Now the 2700X is eight core 16 thread. The 4790 is just four core eight thread and it's from 2014. And if you're like, well, this game is just gonna favor Intel architecture, not by this amount. These make no sense to pair up against each other. And notice that one of the big changes against the old ones I saw was the AMD processor recommendations. They kept the Intels locked in place. And this previous recommended dropped down to the minimum and they threw the 2700 in there. This is really confusing why they're going with this. I'm almost wondering if they actually meant the 2700X, by the way, to be the minimum and the 3600 to be the recommended, just because you'll get stronger single thread performance off 3600, since it's a bit of a newer generation of AMD processor. Although you do have more cores and threads on the 2700X, so this is just really weird. Anyway, <laughs> I will say that compared to previous Battlefield games, I believe this is supposed to have 128 player servers available uh, on PC, which means you will want a stronger processor compared to previous Battlefield games. Although, if you're probably playing on the 64 player servers, you could probably get away with something pretty similar to previous Battlefield games. And the previous Battlefield game, Battlefield 5, did have an AMD 8350 as the minimum. They kept the same Intel 6600K as the minimum. And they had an AMD 1300X or, a, or the same Intel 4790 as the recommended. So this is again really weird because we're keeping the same minimum and recommended Intel processors uh, compared to Battlefield 5, 
but they're increasing the requirements on the AMD side of things to ones that just don't even make sense against these Intels. I'll give you one more thing. Here's a CPU tier list from Tom's hardware. Now there's other places you can get a CPU tier list and this is specifically based on gaming performance. This column is 1080p gaming, 1440p gaming, CPU, it gives us cores and threads. And what I wanna show you here is that the uh, Ryzen 3600, if I use my fancy little find feature, the 3600 generally performs, like you can find your chip on this list, right? This is what I'm getting at. And this, this link will be in my, in my comment section. So if you're wondering where do you fall against these, you can find yours in this list. But what's weird to me is look, the 3600, uh, the 3600 is generally performing similar to an i5-9600K. And, and Tom's hardware even has it above a 9600K. A 9600K is three generations ahead of a 6600K. Again, this just doesn't make any sense. So what I would say here is I think go with the Intel recommendations here, maybe, um, and look at this list or just, you know, hope for the best because these recommendations are nonsense. But you can kind of try to find yours on this list and see where it stacks up against some of the recommendations. I don't know, I, th I think the people there are utterly insane. On the CPU side of things. The GPU side of things, we've got a 1050 Ti, which compared to Battlefield 5 was a 1050. So this is step up on the minimums compared to Battlefield 5, right? Uh, and an RX 560, which compared to Battlefield 5, is actually the same <laughs> AMD recommended GPU. But anyway, so there are similar recommendations on the minimums to Battlefield 5, so that's good to know, stepping it up a little bit on the NVIDIA side of things. And on the recommended GPUs, we see, like I said, a 3060 and a 6600 XT, which is a step up from what they had previously been recommending there, and a huge step up compared to Battlefield 5, which was only a 1060 and a 580. Now, if you're like, I don't know what these numbers mean, Daniel, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, that's why I have something else for you. So this link will also be in the description, but if you go to Tech Power Up, they have a GPU database. And in this GPU database, you can find where your GPU falls in relation to these. So for example, the recommended NVIDIA GPU here is an RTX 3060. And your GPU might be something like an RTX 20, uh, you know, 2070. Well, what you would learn from this is that it's basically the same thing. It's 98%, 100%. They're gonna perform almost exactly the same. So that's how you would use this to help tell where yours falls in comparison to this. So let's say you had the recommended GPU from Battlefield 5, which was, um, you know, a 1060. So how does that compare to the recommended GPU here, which is a 3060? Well, let's look it up on the tier list. So if we go back to this tier list, the uh, 1060, if I scroll up, so we're looking for the, 10, there's the 1070. So if you have 1070, you're at 72% of the performance, right? If you're at a 1060, six gigabyte, you're at 53% of the performance. So that's like half. So if I'm correct that an RTX 3060 is targeting 1080p ultra at about 60 frames per second or better, if I'm correct on that, remember that's my speculation then a 1060 would probably get you 30-ish frames per second at ultra settings. But remember, you don't have to play at ultra settings and in a competitive game, it makes sense to turn things down to low. So now, if I'm correct that a 1050 Ti is going to get you about 60 frames per second on low settings, we can now look at this tier list again. Again, look at where your GPU falls. But if I find a 1050 Ti on here, so we're scrolling up to the 1050 Ti, which is 33% of the recommended, there's a huge gap there, right? So a 1050 Ti, if I now set, click that and set it to 100%, you can find where G, your GPU falls in relation to this. So if I'm correct that a 1050 Ti is getting you 60 frames per second at 1080p, sometimes less, remember, sometimes less, I'm not guaranteeing you those as the minimums, then if you had, for example, a, a 
GTX 1650, you would be getting 25% better frames per second than that at those low settings. That's how you would read this chart. If you have a, you know, a, let's say, a lot of people have a 980, or a lot of people might still be using a 970, that's a pretty common one. So 147% of the performance of a 1050 Ti, that basically means you'd be getting like 90 frames per second at 1080p low ish, right? If I'm right on my speculations. So that's how you would use, uh, sorry, that was 47. I was highlighting the wrong one, but you get the idea. That's how you would use this chart. This video is running really long, so I'm going to end it here, but I recommend finding your GPU on this tier list. My last thought is people mentioned my last one. What if, what if I have a laptop? Well, sorry guys, the laptop GPUs aren't in this tier list. You're going to have to look up how a laptop, your laptop GPU compares to the recommended GPUs here or something else in this tier list to try to get a rough idea. Same thing with this laptop CPUs. They're not as strong as a similarly numbered desktop counterpart. And again, I can't really tell you that because the different power draws of different systems and all of that are all different on laptops. They're confusing. I hope all of you have an excellent day.